Boozer take the lead. Ewing for three. Boozer can't quite get there. Boxed out by Wilcox. I thought that Blake might get a piece of that ball, but Ewing really had the presence of mind to get his shot off. Drew Nicholas hits his first attempt. A three-pointer for Nicholas, and it's 19-14. Drew Nicholas for three. We're at the midpoint of this first 20-minute period at the University of Maryland. Nicholas, another guy, can get extremely hot off the board. There's Wilcox. Boy, he can Man slide. among boys right there. Way over the top of everybody. Just a sophomore. Let's see if Maryland starts getting that ball inside to Baxter. I think they have to make Boozer work defensively. There Wilcox it is. Wilcox to Baxter. Boozer gave up on Baxter. I'm really surprised. He cannot afford to double down on Wilcox as good as Baxter moves without the ball. First points for Lonnie Baxter. Batted away and stolen. Nicholas comes up with it. Blake, such a sure-handed ball. Handler sets up Mouton with a beautiful pass, and it's the biggest Maryland lead. 23-14, timeout Duke. Great job by Maryland, forcing the tempo of this game with a deeper bench, particularly in the power position. There's the double down. It won't work with Baxter. Uh, six, seven thousand. They won't take a seat the entire game. Cheering a 7-0 Terrapin run in the last minute and 20 seconds after Duke had pulled within two. Interesting. Last year, Dick, Maryland had in all four games a double-digit lead at some point in all four of those games, even though they dropped three of them. 22-point lead in the first half, remember, in the national Absolutely. semifinals. Walking. Jason Williams tries to turn the corner, can't make it. The other thing, the old axiom, teams that like to press don't like to be pressed. How about teams that like to run might not like to be run on? And Maryland is certainly getting the ball up the court on Duke the way Duke normally does to other opponents. And characteristic start for Mike Krzyzewski's the Blue Devils with seven turnovers. And uh, Krzyzewski in conversation with one of the officials. Now what he's wanting to talk about is let's get somebody out there to wipe up that spot on the floor. It's on Mike's half court in regard to his half-court offense, so he wants to make sure his players have an opportunity. There is no coach in the college game that works officials the way Mike Krzyzewski does. In this particular case, a realistic request. And Gary Williams knows that. And believe me, he's going to get right out in their face as well. He's working the other official. <laughs> Here are two men who played uh, college ball at the same time in the late 60s. Williams, the captain of the Maryland team, and... Of course, Krzyzewski was captain at uh, West Point in his playing days. Well, a few years ago, Gary was ejected down in Durham, so he knows exactly what match and wits is with that guy down on the other bench. Open as Dixon passes up the three as Dante Jones on him. Takes it to the hole. Won't fall. Williams of Duke touched it last. Give. The NCAA Give tournament. Jones. Is right around the corner, Billy, and uh, where will the teams be seated? Check out projecting the seats at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online keyword CBS Sportsline. Very seldom is Dixon matched up against a bigger man that's as quick as he is. And that's why it's so much fun to watch him try to go ahead and use his pump fakes against Jones. Jones listed at 6'6", and... Uh, Dixon at 6-3, and it goes off Dixon out of bounds to Duke. Great defensive job. That is some matchup to watch. Dixon is going to have to go ahead and realize. Now, Shane Battier was the national defender of the year, but he wouldn't have been able to switch out and play at Dixon. So Duke actually is better this year on that kind of defensive position, but nowhere near as good when they had Battier on the inside. That lady has been the one successful Duke shooter, four for eight from the floor. The rest of the devil team off the opening bell two for 13 from the floor. If I was going to give any advantage to Duke in this game where Maryland has that big advantage of power, it would be that Maryland has no answer defensively unless they're going to put Mouton on Dunleavy for somebody that can handle him. And if they try to go with Mouton, expect Dunleavy to move inside and post him up. Eleventh point. There's his father, Mike, who played at South Carolina, coached the, in the NBA with the Lakers in Portland and Milwaukee. In fact, uh, Dunleavy told me before the game today, I said, of all the uh, pro players that you had contact with, who was nicest to you? He said, oh, that's easy. Magic Johnson. That figure, didn't it? Magic's <laughs> nice to everybody. Jason Williams hawking Mouton. 
And Luton will not take him inside because obviously Maryland doesn't want to waste Baxter and, and Wilcox's position. Boy, Baxter with a good save on an errant throw. From the corner, the three-pointer by Luton not there. And it's out of bounds to Maryland. Horvath has come back in for the Blue Devils as a Boozer being given yet another breather here in the first half. Kind of, it, kind of interesting. Horvath is getting the, the first playing time as a sub of big men inside. He has really struggled with his year off last year due to injury. I think Mike Krzyzewski is giving him all the opportunities he can through the month of January and February, knowing in March he can go back to Sanders if he has to. Wilcox misses, but moves on there to wrap home the rebound. And he now has eight to lead Maryland. And there's the advantage Mouton has if he goes inside. But as I said, they're trying to keep the space open. Boy, this has been a long dry spell for Duke. Duhan. And the block. Out of bounds to whom? No, the officials look at each other at uh, the call. And I think the correct one is Duke's ball. This Maryland team had 15 blocks, one away from their all-time high this year against Norfolk State. Their all-time high is 16, so they can go up for and get them. Yeah, Maryland, as the Terrapins enjoy their largest lead, and other than Mike Dunleavy, Billy Packer, the Duke Blue Devils are icy. Well, they really are, and you can see this field goal shooting percentage by Duke is woeful. They really haven't had, they got good looks about the first four or five minutes of the game. Since that time, only Dunleavy has been able to get himself open. There's been no inside presence whatsoever because Wilcox and Baxter have really taken up the space. Blake doing a real good job cutting down on penetration. Terrific job defensively by Maryland so far in the first half. And by the way, Baxter is blocked. That was his 200th career block here at Maryland. He's led them the last three seasons and a foul inside. That's Randall on over the top of Horvath. Probably not a good foul by Randall whatsoever. Lack of experience right there because what has Horvath shown that he could do with the ball if he got it in low? Boozer returns. Horvath out. There's the steal by Wilcox. Hello. And there you see the tremendous quickness he has. A lazy pass. Wilcox long and lean, but extremely quick for a man his size. Eight points for Chris Wilcox. And that happens by 13. And now five games, Maryland with those double-digit leads. Dunleavy from three-point range. Not there, but Boozer comes up with it. Good Four recovery three. by Mouton. Nothing inside so far for Boozer. Duhan for three. Chris Duhan has his first basket of the game. That change of assignments where Jason Williams has to go find Mouton. Mouton's breaking on that break. Tough matchup for Williams to get back there. Wilcox, little jump hook, and Dunleavy brings it back the other way for Duke. He's got Williams behind him for the jump shot. Another and steal by Wilcox, and it's off to Mouton, two-on-one with Blake. Takes it himself, followed by Randall. Ryan Randall. It is, it is amazing, Dick. This almost reminds me of last year's semifinal game. Maryland totally in a dominant position, beating Duke up and down the floor on both ends. Nothing there for Boozer at all inside. And again, Jerry Williams able to use Randall. One field goal for Duke in the last five minutes of this game, and we're down to the six-minute mark with the Terrapins leading by 12. And remember this, in the last five games, great cut by Dixon. In the last five games, he gets called for the charge. The team that was ahead at halftime lost the basketball game. That's a very interesting point. The teams ahead at halftime, last five in a row, have lost the game. A reminder next Saturday, here's your lineup. Arkansas, Kentucky, Navy, Army early, then Florida, and number seven, Alabama. Boy, what a fight that'll be in the SEC. And then UCLA, Stanford will cap off our triple hitter. The SEC topsy-turvy with so many teams, maybe in the first eight-bid conference in NCAA tournament history. Williams can't hit. And the leading score for Duke has not had a good first half one for five but uh, he has been able to turn things around time and time again in his career with a great second half well, he's going to have to turn it around against a guy that's played him as well defensively as anybody in the country steve blake Baxter. Steps. not where he really wants to be but you can see dixon now trying to go inside and post up maryland's got the, a lot of weapons 
And a tough matchup inside for Duke. Yeah, in part because Gary Williams can bring four very big, talented men to play down in the box, whereas Boozer really is the only muscle guy for Duke. Good overplay by Dixon, not allowing Duke to get in any flow whatsoever in his first half. See if Williams tries to take him off the dribble. Great hedge move that time by Baxter. And Duhan for three. Over the top, out of bounds to Maryland. Now Jason Williams has got to figure out what's happening to him right now. They're hedging on every time that he puts the ball on the floor. Blake, who handles him pretty well on that crossover anyway, is getting a half a man help. Jason's going to have to go ahead and split that double and go down the middle. Luton to Baxter. Dixon now draws Jason Williams. Pulls up and hits. Shot. Oh, that was a tough. Four for one, Dixon. So Dixon with four, the leading scorer for Maryland, and Williams with two, leading Duke, and the two stars not uh, getting on that stat sheet. You see that hedge move every time they're getting being played by a half a man. Ewing that time put it up quickly. Good defensive play by Maryland against this Duke penetration that they normally are able to get inside. Ewing with five to match the number on his jersey. Dixon wants Jason Williams. Boozer comes out. Dixon. And the foul. That's the second straight charge on Juan Dixon. Boy, he really needed to pull up and take his jump shot. He wants some of Williams, who's guarding him now in the matchup defensively, goes right by him. He had to pull up and take a little half jumper there. Dunleavy moving quickly to take his path away. No question about the call, Dick. And what's happening is when Dixon commits himself from, say, 18 feet, obviously Duke playing weak side defense, going to be waiting on him. Blake pulls up. Mouton spins. And Holden is fouled as he tries to put. The pressure bigger team is Maryland in this game. And you can see the great block down here. Jason Williams, who much like was the case with Dixon, committed from about 18 feet. Now Baxter takes a little rest here. But Holden, who is fresh, is not taking a rest. Look at him busting down court for the follow-up. Holden hits the free throw as he's three for three from the line. 46% uh, uh, outside shooter and a solid uh, contributor from the free throw line. Four in a row today. Back to a 33 20 lead, Maryland. in winning the national championship Duke is the first team in college history to take a thousand fouls and a thousand threes it's not just shooting the threes but yesterday on this court Maryland put a line out here beyond the three because they know that Duke will spot up way here now watch what happens as they take the defense and extend it now what this does what this does is it forces spacing by the defensive team that normally Duke takes great advantage of but so far today, they're four for 14 from three. So consequently, that spacing that Maryland would normally have to go out and challenge them for the deep threes has not had to take place. And Maryland has really taken advantage of it with their hedge moves and double teams inside on the dribble. Jason Williams slips again. And Ewing waits for the defender to fly by, and the tip-in is by Nick Horvath, who has his first basket. That's stealing two. Gary Williams really upset with that because he wants a block out. He sends Wilcox right back in there. If Maryland's going to be dominant in any area, it has to be off the glass. Into Baxter. Great rebound by Jason Williams. Listed at 6-3, up high to pull that one down. He has not yet figured out how to get his shots off against Blake, though. Duhon bad is short. Bad shot under the circumstances. Blake has another rebound. Dick, when you're down like that, particularly with Jason Williams cold so far in this game, it's Duhon's job to figure out how to get his backcourt teammate into the game offensively. Blake with 15 on the shot clock. Caught in midair, but gets it off to Nicholas for three. Rattles out and out of bounds to Duke. Now here's where you're stealing points if you're Duke University. Gary Williams has to be upset with that. Horvath, who is not 
been doing anything offensively. Steps inside with no body on him and puts one back down inside. Harrell 